Rebel News has obtained eight pages of unclassified briefing notes from the Department of National Defense about what the United States House Foreign Affairs Committee called the very first COVID super spreader event. Yes, the Military World Games in Wuhan, China, October 2019. The political military brass in Canada knew that going to the games was a bad idea, that the public would absolutely hate it, and they even prepared talking points to deal with the blowback. Do you remember our previous exclusive on what may be the very first super spreader event, the military world games the games took place in october 2019 three months before the canadian government acknowledged the coronavirus was a potential problem manifesting in wuhan china and that person-to-person spread was taking place now we've previously reported on exclusive documents obtained from the public health agency of canada wherein officials were warning of person-to-person spread of coronavirus in at least January of 2020, perhaps even sooner, taking place in a market in Wuhan. We obtained those documents through crowdfunding to a special website, rebelinvestigates.com, and crowdfunding helped us obtain these documents I will report to you today. But first, let's go back a little for some context. Last January, my former colleague, Kian Bexi, broke an incredible story, one that made the U.S. Foreign Affairs Committee Stand up and take notice. Take a listen. The story that's been told and generally accepted about the origins of COVID-19 are simply not true. Where did it come from? And equally important, when did it arrive? These are all questions that need answering and hopefully this aids that a little bit. I've obtained secret military documents distributed from the highest ranks of the Canadian military in an attempt to cover up a scandal of global proportions. The document titled potential exposure to 2019 novel coronavirus during 7th Military World Games in October 2019 in Wuhan, Hubei Province, China, was written by Canada's Surgeon General, AMT Downs, Major General. His position reports to and obeys Justin Trudeau's Defence Minister. A handful of weeks after sending out this gaslighting letter to every Canadian soldier who was in Wuhan for the military games, Major General Downs resigned. I'm going to share with you every crucial detail of this letter, along with an exclusive interview from a senior Canadian Armed Forces member in order to protect the safety and identity of this brave soldier who came forward with this information. We've replaced their voice with a voice actor. I flipped a coin whether it would be a male or female. At the time, this was, you know, toward the tail end of the World Military Games. A whole bunch of athletes got really, really sick. Lung issues, coughing, vomiting, diarrhea. And I'm talking absolutely flat on their backs. Maybe you want to overdub this part, but, you know, we had guys locked in their showers just pissing and shitting themselves. Like they were absolutely laid out and coughing, hacking of all the rest of it. The symptoms of very odd symptoms, depending on the person. To summarize, in October 2019, when the Canadian military deployed their athletes to Wuhan, China to participate in the Military World Games, many came home with what was described at the time as severe pneumonia. One third of the military athletes were sick enough to be quarantined in the back of their transport plane on the way home to Canada. And when news of the coronavirus broke around the world just a few short months later, many of the military athletes who had been sick wanted to test for COVID-19 antibodies to see if they actually had COVID-19 and not just a bad pneumonia. It was the very least the military brass could do, but of course the military denied them. Why? Well, if several dozen Canadian soldiers tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies in January of 2020, having been infected in October 2019, the Chinese would be in big trouble. It would be irrefutable proof that they had lied about the origins of the virus. A whistleblowing member of the military came forward to Kian with documents to prove this all, and we published those at the time. And for showing those leaked documents, Kian Bexty was door knocked at his home his private residence, by the RCMP. Look at this. I'm with the RCMP, Constable Wiley. What for? I'm with the federal, we're with the federal unit here in Calgary. And this is uh, Corporal Jolly. Thank you. What's going on? Is it okay if we step in for a quick private conversation for a few seconds? No. Okay. No, that's fine. We can talk over here. Are you going to speak with us? Uh, What's this regarding? uh, Just in regards to, so we've been asked to come here and speak with you today, okay? And like I said, we're with the RCMP here in Calgary. Federal Do you mind if I record this conversation? Well, for if it's private, we're not recording anything. 
Because we want we want to chat with you. Yeah. About what though? What's this? Talk okay. Well, we prefer if it wasn't recorded. But that's well, I, I mean, I have to. I, okay. Okay. So listen to those two tweet that was sent out January eighth. You know which one I'm referring to? No. Yeah. A tweet. They came to a reporter's door because of a tweet. This is the one they showed me. I said, you know what? Our pothead prime minister has really pissed me off, so I'm moving up the schedule. I've interviewed military personnel, and I'm going to publish sensitive documents that were leaked to me. Enjoy, Justin. This is going to bite. And bite it did. So, just wanted to let you know that uh, we reviewed the, the items that you had put out there. Mm -hmm. And there's no issues with, with any of that, okay? Um, we're not worried about materials that's non-classified, okay? What it really comes down to, we've just been asked to come here, mm -hmm. just because of some of the, the nature of the text that was sensitive material potentially. Now this information about the military games and the mystery disease was included in a House Foreign Affairs Committee report from August 2021. Not too shabby, Mr. Bexty. Take a look at this. At least four countries who sent delegations to the military world games have now confirmed the presence of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 cases within their borders in November and December 2019 before the news of an outbreak first became public. So these four countries are actually doing something that Canada refused to do. And that's they obviously tested their military athletes for antibodies to prove that they had COVID-19 before an outbreak was declared. Let's keep going. As stated above, athletes from France, Italy, and Sweden also complained of illnesses with symptoms similar to COVID-19 while at the Military World Games in Wuhan. The presence of SARS-CoV-2 in four countries on two separate continents suggests a common source. If, as presumed, SARS-CoV-2 first infected humans in Wuhan before spreading to the rest of the world, the 2019 Military World Games in Wuhan appears to be a key vector in the global spread. In other words, potentially one of the first super spreader events. So that's the background of the story for us here. But here's the thing. There were many political reasons why Canada should not have been at those military games. Actually, they never should have sent a single athlete to those games to begin with, and the federal government knew it. A year after the political hostage taking of two Canadian citizens in response to the arrest of a Huawei executive, Meng Wanzhou, on an American warrant at a Vancouver airport, the Canadian government, according to these exclusive documents, had no objections to sending Canadian soldiers to Wuhan, China for the military games. If the government actually had proper moral objections, it may have spared hundreds of military families and extreme pneumonia. We obtained, as I mentioned earlier, a few pages of unclassified military documents about the military world games in Wuhan. So let's take a look at what we have. On page two, we see the three different sizes of delegations that were proposed. They were hoping for the biggest one, of course, though it looks like the actual delegation was smaller, and we will get to that in a second. Page three, we see the prepared media lines in case the government was confronted with the reality of China's abduction of two Canadians, we can see the military was well aware that normal people would not appreciate the optics of participation in the games and the harm that public outrage may cause the Liberals. Look at this. Canadian Armed Forces athletes will be competing at the 7th Military World Games in Wuhan, China City from the 18th to the 27th of October 2019. Given the relationship between Canada and China, their participation may be questioned. The games also begin four days prior to the federal election. The size of the contingent is also in the very same document. The Canadian Armed Forces team participating is comprised of 114 athletes participating in individual and team sports as well as 57 coaches and support staff for a total of 170 individuals. Page four, a prepared answer in case the public wondered why on earth the Liberals were sending military athletes to the Games. Look at this. Why are Canadian Armed Forces athletes participating in China despite the relationship between Canada and China? Any chance Canadian participation will be cancelled? The answer, the spirit of the World Military Games is to create a space for friendly competition that transcends politics. 
in this context, there is no consideration being given to cancelling Canada's participation in the event. On page 5, we can see the prepared answer in case people express concerns about the safety of the military athletes, plus advice on just when to shut up. Question 2, what are we doing to ensure our athletes and personnel will be safe? Answer, the Canadian Armed Forces takes the security of its athletes and personnel seriously. We are adhering to Global Affairs Canada travel advice and advisories. If pressed, we will not comment on internal security procedures and policies. Now, they projected the cost at $610,000, but that doesn't take into account the billions of dollars in damage to the economy, the lost jobs, lost businesses, lost lives to COVID or lockdown despair, and the absolute carnage that COVID caused to our civil liberties. Now, this story was made possible through your generous donations to our special access to information and investigative journalism fund at rebelinvestigates.com to donate to offset our enormous research costs. Please visit that website, rebelinvestigates.com. And thank you to everybody who continuously supports our work. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. This video was made possible through your generous donations to our special investigative journalism website, rebelinvestigates.com. We can't rely on the mainstream media to ask these sorts of questions. In fact, they are bought off by Justin Trudeau specifically to not ask these sorts of questions. Good thing we are so independent. But because we are so independent, we rely on your support. Again, that special website is rebelinvestigates.com.